the, in the song, uh, you actually hear the life story of the songwriter. And especially when you said you wrote it, I can imagine, uh, I think that's what you're representing. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Okay, that should be good. For the sake of time, I think, uh, there's always a lot to cover. <laughs> there's a lot to say, a lot to cover. You know, you know, it's like overflow, right? There's a lot of stuff. Um, so sometimes, uh, excuse me if I go too fast or, you know, but let's read with me if you can follow Acts chapter 5. Verses 12 through 42. I'm going to read it uh, really quick. Okay. We'll come to that. Acts chapter 5, verses 12 through 42. Okay, this is after the story of Ananias and Sapphira we read last time, or did the last time. Um, I'm going to read this uh, from my Bible, but follow yours. And it's a lot, so I'm going to read really quick so we know what the story is. The apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders among the people, and all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. No one else dared join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. As a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by evil spirits, and all of them were healed. Then the high priest and all his associates who were members of the party of the Sadducees were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail, but during the night an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people the full message of this new life. At daybreak, they entered the temple courts as they had been told and began to teach the people. When the high priest and his associates arrived, they called together the Sanhedrin, the full assembly of the elders of Israel, and sent to the jail uh, for the apostles. But on arriving at the jail, the officers did not find them there. So they went back and reported, We found the jail securely locked, with the guards standing at the door. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. On hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests were puzzled, wondering what would come to this. Then someone came and said, Look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts, teaching the people. At that, the captain went with his officers and brought the apostles. They did not use force because they feared that the people would stone them. Having brought the apostles, they made them appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in his name. He said, Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead, whom you have killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey Him. When they heard this, they were furious and wanted to put them to death. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, who was honored by all the people, stood up in the Senate and ordered that the men be put outside for a little while. Then he addressed them, men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do with these men. Some time ago, Theodos appeared claiming to be somebody, and about 400 men rallied to him. He was killed, all his followers were dispersed, and it all came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean appeared in the days of the census and led a band of people in revolt. He too was killed, and all his followers were scattered. Therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone, let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. 
you will only find yourselves fighting against God. His speech persuaded them. They called the apostles in and had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let him go. The apostle left the synagogue rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. May the Lord add the wisdom um, to his word and understanding to our hearts. So, okay, everybody knows this story, right? but we're going to learn something from it, what it means, what it has done. Quickly, I just want to fly by what we learned the last time from the story of Ananias and Sapphira, right? Uh, and we're not going to go in detail, but I just want to remind you of the points that we discussed. In the church, there are two kinds of people, right? And it is nearly impossible to distinguish them from the outside. So we know that. We know that not everybody present in the church necessarily is the holiest, who is the purest, is really following God. So we know there are two kinds of people. And we know that from Ananias and Sapphira. The second one says, we cannot hide lies or for that matter anything from God. Sapphira and Ananias try to hide. We know that we, nothing is hidden from God. The third thing we have learned that the secrets of our heart are not secrets to God. Right? We think it's secret, but God knows it all. Fourth one was that do not take holy things lightly. Right? There are things that are set apart for God and we have to follow those laws, orders, whatever it may be. Uh, make sure we do not take them lightly. And lastly, I think I'm losing battery here. Sin is a deadly serious matter to God. I mean, who doesn't know that? But it's just a reminder, uh, you know, for that. And here's the thing. They died and we wonder why. They contributed money. They did a good thing. So instead of asking, why did they die? We should wonder, why do we remain alive? And that question, my friends, gives us the purpose of our life. Purpose, why we are here, standing, breathing, even being able to speak, right? Uh, and that is a question that uh, uh, we should be asking that. And this applies to many things in life, you know, dangers, like we said, trials, tribulations, tough times. We always ask, why us? Uh, but that is the answer to that question, why, why not us? And we'll see what the disciples did uh, in the times of suffering. This is an interesting saying that we kind of took home yes last time, is that we forget that God's patience, patience is designed to lead us to repentance, not to become bolder in our sin. This is what happens, right? We get away with one thing, and we say, oh, okay, I think God allowed it. We get away with something a little bigger, and we say, oh, it's nothing happened, and there was no lightning bolt. I mean, we got it, okay? But God is giving us a chance. Our God is a God of chances. He gives a second, third, uh, He loves us, right? He's not going to lose any of us. But the idea is that it should not make us bolder. Meaning, it should not, we should not have the thought that I'm going to try something bigger since God is allowing me to do certain things. So know that uh, you should be turning to repentance, but not bolder in sense. So now today, we are here at this story, uh, verse 12, right? And it says right away that um, there were a lot of signs and wonders. Uh, and uh, we see in the story that the religious leaders, instead of being impressed, instead of acknowledging that these things are happening in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, you know, they are persecuting the apostles. We are going to see that, right? Um, the disciples say, it says here that they performed many signs uh, and wonders among the people. They were highly regarded by the people and more and more. More and more men and women uh, believed in the Lord and were added to their number. We keep seeing this, right? Addition to the number, addition to that early church. Now I church, not the Pela Sadina church, no, Umera Nagayalo, right? Um, and what these disciples or the apostles were doing, where they were going around streets, they were going anywhere they can and laying their hands on the sick. Uh, they were healing people. Uh, on, and the people are bringing, uh, you know, there was so much need that they were bringing people and putting them on a sidewalk, on the beds, mattresses. So it says that even if Peter walks by and his shadow, and a parchayari jarnayana sadhak, right? They were so desperate of healing, right? So verse 16, we read, it says, Crowds gathered 
from also from the towns around Jerusalem, like Ajwadi, not just Jerusalem, but around the Jerusalem. And it says those who were tormented by impure spirits. So not just sick, but sickness, right? And all of them. It says the words all of them. It doesn't say kamu saja kita baca ya. Doesn't say some. It says all of them were healed. Okay. So here's the interesting thing that we want to note. Okay. Um, one interesting thing is that it says that no one else dared to join them. Oh, the main question which I want you to think something. Great group of people, holy looking people, people meeting in the name of Jesus Christ. People healing in the name of Jesus Christ, miracles happening in front of you, there are wonders happening in front of you. Won't you feel like, oh, I have group my joy you want to join this group? Right? I mean, there's something good happening. Who doesn't want to join something like that? So, uh, a group like that. But why does it say that no one else dared to join? Gujarati Makashe, Bija Lokomadi, Koini Pan Himmat, Eoni Sade, Ubari Awari Nadi. Why not? Think about that. There's something that thought, right? Why so? So many healings, so many miracles. Why no one dared to join them, right? So I believe the writer of Acts of the Apostles, Luke, St. Luke is telling us that because of the story of Ananias and Sapphira, because the faith they suffered, people were afraid. And which people were afraid? The people who were half-hearted. The people who were like, ah, the joa jee kali joa mande. They were afraid. I don't know. Photo they were, you know, like, right? We get afraid. So we don't want to have that. So that is the idea. They were afraid. These were the people who were half-hearted. Half-hearted is like, asuk saru se, but marthi to itu saru nato. I I want to retain my things. I want to keep my beliefs. I want to follow my lifestyle. All I cannot look at what happened to those two. So those are the people that left out, uh, and these people did not risk identifying themselves with the believers. Je khara believers ata emni sade emnu naam churai that they stayed away from that. Okay. So I believe that if we conduct ourselves accordingly, apne yehi the jiva maniye to right. I think what if we are professing Christ, like who is Christ to us? Uh, be truthful to God's word. Exactly what God's word says, we are going to follow that. Uh, and share strong faith, right? When we have just talked about sharing faith. We share God's faith, God's word very strongly. Nothing outside of God's word. Then we will also have many that will join. But we may have some that will not dare to join. So it is not always about why don't they come? Why don't they? Why doesn't he come? Why don't... There are some people who are not going to want, and not just our church. I'm talking about any church. You will find people that stay away for some obvious reasons, but the Lord works, and we know that God works in their life, right? Uh, so many might stay away. Don't worry when you see people when you are maybe you're telling somebody, come, come with me, come to me, come to the church. They may stay away, so don't worry, uh, because what might be happening is that their uh, purpose, uh, whatever their, their cause is, it may not be served here. Whatever they're desiring to do, they're going to think like, I don't think it's going to work here, what I want to do. I want to do this, I want to have a title, I want to have a position, I want to go high up in the ranks. And maybe they might think that, oh, maybe here it won't happen, here everybody is a servant. Here, all of us are servants. There are no bosses and CEOs, and right? So somebody who's looking for that may not join uh, that kind of a place. So, would you like to belong to a church like that? I think we already belong. I, I, I really think uh, where everybody here is a true believer. I really sincerely thank God. Every single person here is a strong believer. I see your faith. I see you guys praying before the worship. I see you praying before you even start the car. Everyone is a strong believer in Christ. So let us make sure, uh, first of all, that we are the true believers first, right? Apply it to us. So don't just listen. Don't just show false holiness. I'm not a Bible, I'm going to the, you know, read Bible, I'm carrying, I'm going at three times to a church and also on weekdays and, you know, whatever or not. Don't, don't pretend. God sees it. God, like we said, you can hide nothing from God, right? But let us truly live our faith. Just 
profess their faith. Now, how does that work? How does living your faith, how does that work? You know, because in everything that you do, you will be honoring God. You will never do anything that dishonors God. What do you think? They're thinking like, oh, holy man. <laughs> that doesn't work that way, right? So when, you, when they see somebody did something wrong to you, somebody did something just wrong, and you are dealing with them in love, that is what, called, what is called living by faith. You show God's love to them, and you will. I'm telling you, you will love all. All will be healed, but I'm saying that all, every one of these people will be touched by you. Every one of these people, and all of God's people will be touched uh, you know, if you show love to others, if you show respect to others, every single person that comes in a church, not just this church, but any church you go to, you have to show respect to them. You have to welcome them. They are each individuals, they are different individuals. Every one of them has a different personality, right? But then in personality, maybe they are not all like you. Maybe they don't just dress like you. No, I don't check out very nice yet. Whatever, like you are in a suit, so what, what does it matter? But they are here for God. You have to start respecting. And you know what? You don't apply your opinions to others. Like sometimes when somebody enters a room, you already build an opinion. Hmm, okay. You know, stop building those opinions. And not just not build them, stop sharing them with others. This is where we go wrong, is when we start like, you know, I think, you know, I don't know. This is what it is. Why? This is something you just produced in your mind and you are already sharing that with others without any proof. And even if you had proof, why do you want to share something negative? So if you want people to come to church, if you want people added into churches, you have to show that love with others. Okay? Do not involve, uh, you know, other in this kind of other, like, you know, gossiping and, uh, you know, putting people down or judging people. We should not be doing that at all. You know, you will only see God's glory in everything that happens and you will show love if somebody falls down, if somebody makes a mistake, if somebody doesn't sing well, if somebody doesn't know a certain, if somebody comes a little late, but in all of that, show God's love. There is some kind of a purpose that God has for everything to happen. God is glorified, right? You heard stories that uh, you were late because you had to stop by and help somebody. I told you a story of my cousin, I don't want to go that again, but yeah, maybe there was a purpose that was served for God's glory, and we are not the ones to say, Kem you know, we are, or Kem right? We shouldn't be doing that. So think about not our own personal glory, but God's glory. Think about believing God, not in your own belief. Right? Go by God's standards, not by your own made, man made standards. Okay? It says in the later half of the verse 13 that we read that even though the pretenders did not join the group of believers, okay, I think it says that they did not join them, but what did they do? They respected them. So if you are like that, then people may not come, people may not join, but they're going to see your life and they're going to have a respect for you. That I think, I cannot be that way, right? but these guys are good. How many times have you seen people that you say, yes, truly good, good person, right? And that is what we want people to say that about uh, us and uh, all of us. So it goes to say that if you cling to God, if you follow God's principles, the goodness of God, you may not have many followers. There are people who, who might stay away. Oh, holy. <laughs> Like there's a lot of people that already make that call, like, uh, you know, there was somebody who was talking about a party or something, you know, like, uh, for Thanksgiving, and I was sitting right there, and they were saying, well, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, so they're already making this call, as to, I, I don't know what they're planning in the party, but they obviously didn't want me there, so they, which is okay, but I mean, what goes to show that uh, people who have tried to call, I, I, I don't know if you have experienced that, uh, how, do, how else do you live your faith? When people call you or people drag you, pull you into things, uh, don't get into it. Uh, I don't know if it has happened to you, but if somebody calls and starts telling you about somebody else, put a stop with it. I'm sorry, but I'm not interested. I don't want to hear about it. You know what that will do? When you do not listen to somebody else telling you about somebody else, at least that person is going to think, Next time, that, yeah, this person will not talk about me. 
He didn't talk about the other person. He will never talk about me. Mahari bhi baat hai nahi skar. You are creating that image. You are creating that standard, that integrity, right? The moral. And what will happen is when you want to share God, when you want to share Christ with that person, they will feel comfortable with you. They will honor what you say. They know that this is a man who is going to be truthful. Uh, and, uh, you know, the reason why we want to do this is this. One of the reasons why, not one, the main reason why we should be doing this, living our faith, glorifying God is this. Because when we call ourselves Christians, in the name Christian, there is Christ. We are representing Christ. How can we call ourselves Christian and do things that dishonor Christ? Christi kevda wala bhai Krishna naam ne, but how can we do that? And every time we do one of those things that I said, judging, gossiping, whatever it may be, we are dishonoring Christ. And we have to be very careful. So create this impression out there where people know, Aato au karej nahi. You know, I have been blessed with some people, handful of people that know me personally, and I've heard through people when something was said, oh, Samaj naam teru, Parana naam teru. So there was a couple of people that came and said, Parana naam teru, Parana naam teru, Parana naam teru. And this person said, Tomi veda au karej nahi. Evo tamara veda maate, evo kai sakai, right? Everyone. This person would never do that because you have to have that image, right? I mean, people will say that, uh, but that's not the idea. And I'm not talking about getting glory that I'm doing. I make many mistakes, believe me. Uh, plenty of mistakes. Sometimes I think I'm doing the right thing and it may be a wrong thing for somebody. So I'm not saying perfect. I'm not saying that. But as much as possible, try to always question that thing we said earlier. Will it honor God? Will it honor Christ, right? So people will believe you. Now remember, here's the thing. When we say that, what do people think of you? Loko Maravi says, Su Vichara said, Eunadi Nadi Kerala. Do you understand the difference? Yes, in one way, you want people to think good of you. Because the Sahara show, Raguna Manas show, Raguna Lady show, whatever. Yes, but I'm not saying that that is our focus, what others are talking about, what others think about me. Because at the bottom line, what is important is what Christ thinks about us, what Jesus thinks about us. That, you know, we should never forget that is, it is the ultimate thing is what God thinks of, about us and what He would testify about you. If Christ had to say something about us, what would He say, right? That is the idea. So now I've always noticed uh, this, right? Uh, I think I've noticed in our church uh, a few things that happen. I'm not sure about other churches, I don't know how things happen, but I want to tell you certain things based on the church, the things that we just talked about, the apostles, what they did. This is what happens. When we come to a church that has people like this, people of faith, people who follow God, people who love, people who welcome everybody. Hey, you know, I, I'm so happy to see you. Right? Even two sentences. I don't always get to sit down and talk with everybody, but at least a few lines. This is what happens. This is what we'll see in churches like that, and I see in ours. One is this. Actually, many things, but the first point is unity, kindness, love, and respect for each other. I think we see that here. And that is what I love about this group, and I pray that it always stays. Respect for others, uh, and always lifting Jesus high, making sure He's honored and glorified. Uh, and uh, my question would be, don't you want MGM to be that place? I think, it, I, think I believe it already is. I, I do want it to be that way, but I think it already is that way. Uh, we welcome everyone, we invite everyone. And here's the thing I would just challenge you. If you think we are doing good, tell others about it. It is not a matter of membership, it is not, we, we don't have that, but it's a member of, it's a matter of, if you're thinking that we are teaching the word of God, we are getting stronger in our faith, our family lives are improving, my personal life is improving, then tell others. You can always invite people who don't go somewhere, who do not have a home. I would suggest that, that would be a little plug for us to invite them to us, right? Uh, help them to bring, uh, come here and together we can learn more about God. Together we can walk this walk of faith. Uh, you know, that is uh, until Christ Jesus comes, we can walk together. Okay, we also see in verses 12 through 16 that many signs and wonders happen. Many were healed, it says, right? Now, does it happen today? 
I'm talking about here, okay? I don't know other churches what happens, but I'm going to speak about it. Does it happen today? Can it happen at MGM? Can it happen here? That there will be miracles, there will be wonders, there will be signs, okay? I say that it does. Look at our history. And I'm not talking about lame jumping and blind men seeing. I'm not talking about, but I'm talking about the spiritual growth. The name of Christ is lifted high and spiritual growth has happened in every family that has been a part of this family. Okay, I, I mean I see that, I, you know, I, I see the benefit, I see the blessings that are there and this is something that has grown from here individually as well as as a family we have had spiritual growth. Things we learn here are taken out and shared in the world and that is the beauty, that is the whole idea, it's shared for God's glory. We learned here a couple of things for those of you who don't know or who are probably visiting is one of the things we learned here is to deal with matters transparently, fully with them. One of the you know, like, no no hidden agendas, nothing like that. You know you don't say you whisper, you say half truths, nothing like that. Like that. This is what we learned, and I'll tell you we the way the best way I can say this is this that um, uh, when we become uh, mature, when we become spiritually mature, not just in age, because you can be 80 and still don't understand anything, but when you become spiritually mature, we, we understand how to deal with things. If something happens between two people, the best way to clarify that, the best way to diffuse it, the best way to make sure that the relations remain, the best way to make sure that the friendship remains, Let's talk about it. Agree to disagree. In America, there is a sentence that I don't know if all of you have heard this, but let us agree to disagree. Let me make an example. The sky is blue. Oh no, it's gray. Oh uh, no, it's blue. No, it's gray. Do you fight about that? No, I don't know. Okay, to you it's gray. To me, I see. That is called agree to disagree. And that was just a silly example, but it can happen on any any other issues, right? Give in, you know, and both parties are like that. There won't be like this. Please, Juni Bakrani Marda Gona Kabras, but a Kuru Kurve Bakrai, and who knows that story. Two boats came on a, on a narrow bridge. Right? Very narrow, only one boat can walk at one time. So two boats came, and Pella Bada Hata, no grey and no blue Bada. They were to Tutum Karyu and Padi Nadim. Right? They, they fell in the river. And then two wise boats came. Both not be wise, right? So the two, two like intelligent goats came and they came and they, they realized that there was no way to cross until you know, only one of them. So one sat down, kneeled down and the other one went over. And the other one walked after them. Kneeling, isn't that a good principle? Kneeling down, humbling yourself. That's what I'm talking about. Agree to disagree. Okay, it's your light of the way. I'll let you go first. How easy it is to do stuff like that and everything good, good things prevail, right? So talk openly, talk lovingly and this is what we see in our church. And one of the other good things I've seen is this and this is my pride and joy. Many people have started BSF. You know, in, I've, been, I've been going to BSF for 17 years. This is my 18th year, this study of uh, you know, the people of the promised land is the 18th year. I have asked so many people, adults, and my other church, and my work, I've been only able to sign up, or not actually to sign up, but I've been only able to encourage two people to join. I think here, how many of you, by show of hands, how many of you go? Yeah, already about nine of us, right? Here. And that's, what does that do? Is BSF something that says, oh, Tony, by you signed up nine people, very good. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard that, right? It's not that. But what it does in your lives is what is evil. BSF, when I started joining, is what it told me. That it is going to teach me, equip me, maneva, evirite, equip, no, so words, it will prepare me that the things I learn about God, I can go use in the church. And that's what it is. And then obviously, the other benefits are you learn the word of God. You go deeper into the Word of God. And then all of these things you're hearing is probably, or not probably, are from BSL. Where every sentence you read has an application. Like, why did this happen? What does it mean to me? How should my life change? Otherwise, oh, I have to read five pages, I read it. 
that's that's the end of it. BSF says no. And I'll tell you something about how many of you remember Mr. Robin Kantari? Brian, remember I have Brian. Ash is going to live with my son and uh, their wife said, and uh, father Robin. Remember he was a bodybuilder? He came here and he preached us on Nehemiah, building the wall of Nehemiah. By the way, I was talking to him, he has sent special regards to you. But that is the Nabui Atharaisha. But these are a couple of things that he shared with me. Tell the people, tell MGM people that when you read the word of God, don't just read it. But when you read it, stop. After you read it, stop. Slow down. First of all, slow down. I think we have to move fast, won't you? But first of all, when you read it, slow down and then stop. And how about go in reverse? So I take you. How many times has it happened when you read something and after when you think back, like, wait a minute, what did I just read? So he said, go reverse and see what God is trying to tell you. See what God is trying to teach us. See what the Holy Spirit is saying. Go back. Ask God what it means. What, what I just read, read, God, what are you trying to tell me out of that? And I'll tell you this, that it is also for your personal, but even when you do family Bible reading, every home I bet you has Bible reading uh, as a family, right? It, is, it happens, I am sure. Okay? But when you're done, finished Bible reading, don't just rush to the prayer. I just want to watch it. And don't, do that. You know, don't just do that. If you're not done, sit for a little bit. And there are some people in the families that can go 0 to 60, you know, in one second. And then there are some people take time to warm up. So you know the people who go 0 to 60 very fast should take some time to explain to the warming up people what we just read. Talk about it. Discuss questions about it. Like Ajay Amra Vachu, Mami, and Amini Ka. Or I'm just kidding. Okay, you know, this is what we just read. What do you think? Talk about that. Don't just make this an exercise like go, go, go. No, 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 that, right? And that is the idea. So those are things I've added, but again, uh, regards from uh, Robin, right? And I think that's the point that he added for me. And these are the things that I see happening in our family. So here's the thing. When we slow down, when we stop for somebody who is slow, this is what happens. If you want to go fast, go alone. Yeah, you can get there, but <laughs> you can be alone. Man is not meant to you know, stay alone, right? But if you want to go further, go together. These are a couple of things that you can, if you can apply that in your life. We used to have that in our family. We used to have a devotional that after we read it, there were already questions that were given. And I would say, Shaina, what do you think about it? Sean, what do you think about this? Then they would give their answers. And sometimes they had their answers. Sometimes kids do have amazing wisdom. So we can all learn. That is exactly what it means. Okay. So now, when we start doing things right. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take about 5-10 more minutes uh, if I may. Uh, but when we start doing things, the whole topic was about the apostles being persecuted. They did the things right. They preached Jesus. They healed people, uh, all of those things. You know, they prayed and they shared God's word. So what happened after that? Persecution. I'll tell you this, that when you start doing the right things, you will find tough times. And I've said this before, that if your life is too easy, if somebody tells me like, both must lunch, I have more, then I'm going to tell you that you're not working, doing something for God. I'll tell you that right now. Okay? I mean, there is good life, there is a blessing. I might like, both must share, but must is not just fun and daman. Must this because of blessings, my wife, my children, my friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ, a must. That is the must I talk about. Okay. So, what happens is when they do this, the Sadducees, right, the religious leaders, they are jealous. <laughs> they are jealous of these apostles. And they see that people are following them. But the local apostles popularity that is the biggest that's ever since uh, I think the religion that has been a problem. So this was a group, Ajay Sadducees, there was a group of religious leaders, Pharisees and other. Uh, remember this, that in those days, it was not just a religious group. They were even a political group. 
they were even the leaders of the community, right? And like today, you know, religious group is religious and they keep politics and religion. In those days, it was a governing body, right? Governing body, so they are concerned that these people are growing too fast. Too many people are adding and too many, uh, this is the worry they have, they are jealous. And the disciples of Jesus continue to heal. They are preaching in the temple, they are on the street corners, uh, in homes. And their impact was powerful. They are becoming very like, uh, pop, I wouldn't say popular, but people were following him, right? Um, and the real fear or cause of jealousy was that they were feeling the loss of the authority. They were losing their power. And that is why they're jealous. So how many times do you see that happening? You may see that happening even now. Is when you start doing things uh, you know, for the Lord. Those of us who are in ministry, Jehovah Minister Maja, they probably feel that. They know that. That the, the time you start doing good, there's always going to be opposition. Somebody's going to say, Poncho, Poncho, the Kanti you know, whatever, those kind of things. Have you heard about that? But I won't go into the details of that. But I will tell you this. I'll tell you a story. Uh, what a true God's servant does when there are times that are tough. A pastor in a, uh, a small village had a good sized congregation. They would be meeting every Sunday, he was doing good. It so happened that after a while he saw some people leave. Leave it then, right? they stopped coming. Then a few Sundays, some more people stopped coming. And then some more and some more. Like people were like gradually disappearing from every Sunday, it was getting less and less. So um, he asked one of his people, uh, his church people, like, what is going on? Why, why are people you know, not coming? So his uh, his associate or whoever it was, his helper said, Well, do you know about that other church that just started at the other end of the town? You can know. He said, yeah, there is a new pastor who came and he started preaching and he is really powerful preacher and a good, you know, good, a lot of good things are happening. God's word is preached powerfully. God's work is done powerfully, so people are going to see him. So the pastor is good. So, he didn't do that. This is what he said. Let's lock up the church. Abru church, bank lock the church. You know why? Because if God's work is happening there, then what am I doing here? Rabu nu kaam kya thay aushe? Tu mohi asu kar shaapar bhi thay chodi. How many leaders would be willing to do that? That is where God's work is happening. I'm going to close my shop. I'm going to, I would rather be where God's work is done. And isn't that awesome testimony? But the Sadducees don't do that. Okay, uh, coming back to our story really quick. Uh, let, let me just go by this so we can go really quick. Um, okay, you know, they uh, were th threatening, you know, to the apostles. They were giving strict instructions. Don't preach the name of Jesus. But it did not have any effect on these enthusiastic believers. They kept doing that, okay? Um, point in verse 19. They were told what they were, you know, these apostles, what they were doing is exactly what they were told. Angel of the Lord said, go and do this, go and preach. And that is exactly what they are doing, right? So they were told by the angel, they were following what God's word or God's angel had told them and they obeyed, okay? Um, let's see. The question that I sent out in our text, okay, this is what I, uh, I asked, right? I hope you don't know why you are and any I hope you, okay, this is what I'm going to start doing. I'm going to tell you this every Friday or Saturday when I send out the text invitation, I'm going to pose some questions from what we are going to discuss, and I'm hoping that you guys spend some time thinking about that. So the question to us was, whose orders are you following? Okay, you know what the disciples said, right? Uh, uh, they were told by the angel, and the disciples said in verse 19, if you look at verse, oh, I mean, sorry, verse 29, this is what it says. The answer, we must obey God rather than human beings. Or are we just like, uh, well, I gotta take care of him, and then photo loves it. You feel bad, or uh, let me go just for this one time, let me do this. And he 
may, may not be something that glorifies God, but we are pleasing a person. And we see that happening in our daily life. We try to please people because a person, when I don't know, if it is a spiritual mature person, and if you are offered something to do with that person, and if you say, sorry, my faith does not allow me to do that, do you think you would lose a friend? No. A true friend you would not lose. Spiritually strong friend, you would not lose. But you should have that guts, you should have that courage, you should have the boldness to say, sorry, my God tells me not to go there. My God tells me not to say this. My God tells me not to use bad words. My God tells me not to go to certain places. My God tells me not to drink. My God tells me to treat my wife with respect. Right? Okay, so quick personal application. Who's the orders? Somebody in shape. Who's uh, think we're listening? Okay. So there was another question I sent to you. And so what is the foundation of your works? By the way, who knows who Gamaliel was? Who was Gamaliel? Test. Who was Gamaliel? The one who stopped. He was one who was respected, it says, right? He was respected. But who is Gamaliel? Where does his name come up? He taught Saul. Exactly. He was a teacher of Saul who became Paul. Remember? So he's a wise man. And remember, Saul was learned. He learned from people like this. Okay? So, who's? This is what he says. Okay? Verse 30, uh, this is what Gamaliel says. If their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. Who is Gujarati? 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 I'm going to read this in English, but follow it with Gujarati. Uh, and it says, if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop them. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. Okay, can you read it in Gujarati, please? <laughs> Okay. Isn't that amazing? So we are not fighting the battle. If you are on the right side, if you are on the God's side, then God fights your battle. We see that in Bible plenty of time. God fights the battle of righteous men and women. So we don't have to worry about that and that is what they are being warned. Okay? So remember that, by the way, this is also if any of us are trying, starting, maybe already doing something for God, ask this question to yourself. What you are doing, is it from human? Are you being honored or is God being honored? And the outcome will be this. That if it is from God, it will be sustained. The foundation will be strong. If it is from men, it will fail. Okay? Last question. Okay. These guys, they were insulted. Let me tell you this, by the way. For Jewish people, to get beaten, that was humiliating. Not just Jewish people. It would be one like that. So for Jewish people, it was humiliating when they got beat. They were like, uh, I think it said they were uh, so I think they, uh, they were whipped. Okay, anyway, I think they were beaten, let's just say that. So anyway, it was humiliating for them. So were they sad? Like, oh no, but I will give you my like the guy said to let us go. That's what Gamaliel said, let them go, and they still beat us. But they are actually not sad, they are not depressed, they are rejoicing and they start doing it. So question to us. Aparamana challenge me, Prabhu. Ke Prabhuna namma apru apman karvama. Apru apman sarana. If we are insulted in the name of God, name of Christ. If we are beaten, let's never forbid that happens. Or if we are put down, if we are uh, pushed back, you know, when you are doing the work of God, would you feel insulted or would you be like those apostles? I think it says right here, I'm going to read the last word. Okay, the last part says, verse 41.
31 and onwards, the apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing, okay, because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Prabhu Isuna Namma Amna Mar Padeo Amna Bo Anantar. Prabhu Isuna Namma Maru Apman Karo Amayu Mane Koi Vandu. Prabhu Isuna Namma Mane Dakho Mane Kado Amayu. In the name of Christ I was insulted, I do not have a problem. Let's have that attitude. When we, when we do. And then it says, day after day, in the temple courts, and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is Christ. Only the power of Holy Spirit. Pavitra Atmana or Manj Only the power of Holy Spirit gives us that strength. Only in the power of Holy Spirit we see suffering as a gift. Parikshana Paru ke persecution nahu tamaru tamari sadhavani nahi can you consider that a gift? Holy Spirit enables us to do that. And look at it that way. Holy Spirit tells us it is a privilege. Prabhu ne mare aave kavu mare mare lao cha. How many of you understand the word lao? It is such a rich word. I mean, it is a privilege. I am honored. I am. You respected me. But you can't tell me that I am not going to be That is not what we are talking about. But you can't tell me that I am not going to be able to I feel honored. Can we say that? Could we say that? That is the awesome thing. Now, I am not saying that we have to go through that. The idea is. We have to live that way. The idea is that no matter what, we have to stay firm. Our foundation has to be firm in Jesus Christ. Never back down. Never like you know, like turn the other way. Like oh, I think it might be bad if I talk about Jesus Christ right now. If this doesn't. No, Jesus is my Lord. There are people around me that when they speak something bad, or when they do something bad, or if somebody uses the word or name of Jesus in a bad way. You know, I do tell them that you know that you are insulting my God. They use the name Jesus Christ as a curse or a, or a bad word in a, in a bad tone. It is okay for a Christian to say, by the way, that is my God you are talking about. That is my Savior who has saved my life. Stop me from going to death in, in hell. Do not take his name like that. And people will respect that, I will tell you that. But the problem is, we don't say that. I think from this story, one thing we can learn, courage, boldness, don't worry, uh, you know. And it's like we said, should I listen to people or should I do what God has told them? Okay? So, the last, I think we already talked about that. Here are some challenge questions. Prabhuma Maranari Shanti, when you live for God, the comfort that you got, comfort that you get, do you know this comfort? Do you have this comfort? And do you have the power of the Holy Spirit? Question number two. Do you remain true to God and Jesus Christ even in the midst of trial and humiliation? We heard a song, we heard a testimony. He will never leave you. But the problem is, we leave. God is always there. We sometimes leave. So do you leave? Do you remain true to God? No matter what happens. And lastly, my last question for the night is are you able to show joy in spite of negative circumstances? Laughing. I think Ajay Prabhu Gheet Dora smile, right? What was that word? Muskura. Of course, you know, who says like Muskura? But. But in a difficult time, that's what it is talking about, okay? Negative circumstances, now can you laugh? When somebody is insulted, think about it this way. All of us are sitting here and somebody insults you. You, I cannot, and you can, but remember I told you that one time to smile and say, God bless you. Remember one time he said that? Do you know what it does to that other person? Bible said it, it pours out like, it's like putting hot coal. Garam angara mukwa jiru shajara tamayana premiti jawa. When you reply anger with love, that's what it is. And only the Holy Spirit, only the Holy Spirit, only the Holy Spirit 
if you haven't invited Holy Spirit in your life, so these are going to be tough things. But if you have, and Jesus lives in your heart, and He will fight your battles, He will stand up for you, He will do miracles, He will do wonders, He will do signs, wherever you go there will be peace, you stand in the middle of two enemies, they will become friends. I don't know. God is amazing. So let us pray and ask God for those blessings in MGM and all the churches and all the places wherever God leads you. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for Holy Spirit. Only through Holy Spirit, Lord, we are even able to stand and understand and speak and hear and listen and more importantly implement pavitra atma sivai apapato ame amana jivan ma utari shakwana nahi prabhu aaje yahan baitha le ke ek vyakti ne mathe mari prarthna hai ke pavitra atma ne aa mantra ape jo already pavitra atma amara hriday ma che to emne aahvan ape ke pavitra atma ne request kare that ke emne holy pavitra jivan jiva mane shakti mantare that Holy Spirit would enable us to live a life that respects, that honors Jesus Christ. And it will give us the right things to say at the right time, at the right place. It will bring results. The fruit of the Spirit will start being manifested in our life. I pray, Lord, that if for a better life in your life, in your life, in your family, 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 in your shopping, karwama, driving, in India, in your family, 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 while watching TV or playing sports, for the these fruits, of spirit would be shown, manifested, revealed, it would bring your kingdom on this earth. The prayer that we pray, your kingdom come, Tamaru Rajyao, Pena Mate, Mushu Karushu, have that question posed to us, what am I doing to help or anything to do with bringing God's kingdom upon this earth? Thank you, Jesus, for your life, uh, your suffering, your dying and your resurrect, being resurrected on the third day for us. Thank you for opening that way for us, where we can be in God's presence. Thank you again for this group of people, and I pray that this group will multiply, not necessarily here, but outside the world. Multiply that. I wanted to um, finish this. So, will you have a